the Lord says in John 13, that's the gospel passage today, in John 13, verse 16, it says, Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. To understand this, we, we go back to a few verses before it. Jesus washes the feet of his disciples, which would have shocked the disciples themselves. And then he says, you call me teacher and Lord, you're right, so I am. If I, your teacher, have watched, washed your feet, you also have to wash one another's feet. And so I have set you an example that you should do as I have done. And then he says, very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. So Jesus is putting the benchmark and he's putting where our focus should be. I remember when I was uh, doing my one year of regency in Maharashtra, we had, um, it's a, it's a school and in the school we have this, a person who is in charge of the physical education, an exceptional sportsman, comes from a very, very humble home and uh, he just stays next to the school. He's kind of an all-in-one. He's a physical education teacher. And at the same time, after school hours, he, he doubles up as the gardener and, and takes care of things around the, around the property. But, but this person, his name is Salim, I think. And he, he kind of did everything over there. He became the all-in-all, -all, as we would say. And if ever Salim had to be replaced, it would become an impossibility because Salim, by doing simple things, very simple things, he wasn't, he wasn't the principal of the school, he wasn't, he wasn't the finance officer of the school, nothing. Doing very simple things, Salim set a very high benchmark. By doing simple things, he has set a very high benchmark. And this is what the Lord is, is doing over here by doing one of the most menial acts the teacher of the time would never do. Jesus has set the benchmark right up there. He says, this is the example I give you. And servants are not greater than their master. And so if this is the example I give you. This is the benchmark. This is what you're expected to to hold on to. This is what he expected to reach. So Jesus uses himself as the benchmark. The measuring mark for, for our spirituality of who we are supposed to be. This is the bridegroom. And therefore, we cannot have anything lesser than that. I remember coming across a person who refused to go back to her own, her own parish church. She's going to another place. And this is not in Australia. This was when I was in India. But she said, I will not go back to that church till the priest moves from there. I asked, what's wrong with the priest? She said, the problem is not with the priest. She said, the problem is with the person who is in charge of the choir. They sidelined me. And every time I used to walk back into the church and I would hear the choir singing. And when this person went on the high notes, I would get so irritated during the mass that I felt like taking whatever was there in my hand and flinging it at her. I couldn't accept it. And she said, I'm waiting for the priest to change for when the priest changes, then all the other people around that priest will change as well. And so will this person in the choir. And that is when I will go back into the church. Where is our focus? Where is our focus? Is our focus on things that are, that are visibly seen around or, or people that we see around. Shouldn't our focus always be Jesus because he is the bridegroom. And that is, that is what we should always remember even within the church. So very often we have the excuse that I've, I've seen the hierarchy in the church not, not being a good example. The priest is not a good example or the bishop is not a good example. That doesn't 
that doesn't give us an excuse because the bridegroom of the church is Christ. It is he who is the measuring mark. It is he who we look at. And that is why the scripture would say in Psalm 34, verse 5, look to him and be radiant. We are not looking to the, to the choir to be radiant. We are not looking to the priest to be radiant. We are not looking to our brother, our sister to be radiant. We are not looking at how our parents are living their faith to be radiant. True, there is a beautiful thing called a witness value where I am expected to be a witness for Christ. True. But I cannot use someone else's not being a witness value for me to then use it as an excuse for not coming up to the expectations that Christ has. The Lord says, the servant is not greater than the master. And I give you a command. This is what I tell you to do. Because I place myself as a measuring mark. And therefore, every time I live my spirituality, every time I walk into the church, every time I pray, I cannot take my focus away from the bridegroom. He is my measuring mark. Look to him and be radiant. I do as Christ does. I don't do as Father Michael does. I don't do as, as the bishop does. I don't do as the choir does. I do as Christ does. For he is the bridegroom of the church. And he is perfect. True, the, the, the others will be like the, will be like the maid of honor or the best man or, or, or everyone else. But, but no, we, we look at the bridegroom. He is our measuring mark. In everything that we do, in everything that we do in our spirituality, in everything that we do in our journey of faith, Christ is the measuring mark. He is the bridegroom. He is the reason why I am in the church. He is the reason why I am praying. He is my measuring mark. And whatever I do is inspired by what Christ has asked me to do. For there is perfection in that. We cannot. Give up thinking to ourselves, well, that is Christ. And it's a bit too much for me to do. And, and that is where the, the presence of the Spirit comes to help me reach that benchmark of the bridegroom who is Christ. The Spirit prompts me towards it. How is it possible for me to do it? The Spirit will help me. Isn't that what was told to the Blessed Mother when she said, how is this going to be? How is this possible? Luke chapter 1, verse 30. Luke chapter 1, verse 33, 34. Mary said to the angel, how can this be? Since I'm a virgin, I'm just a virgin. How can this be? The beautiful response was, the Holy Spirit will come down upon you. How beautiful that the Holy Spirit makes so many things possible for us. To help us reach that beautiful benchmark that Jesus has set for us. The bridegroom has set for us. When the apostles, after Jesus' resurrection in Acts chapter 1, the word tells us just at the ascension of Jesus, the Lord is going to go off. And these apostles are going to be shaken up because Jesus' resurrected presence is no more going to be there with them. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? And he replied, it is not for you to know the times and the periods. And then he tells them in verse 8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And then you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all of Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When my spirit comes upon you, my spirit will help you. To try and strive to keep the benchmark that I have set as a bridegroom. And so even as we are moving towards Pentecost, how is this possible? How is it that we are supposed to do what Christ asked us to do? The Spirit gives me strength. I pray for the Spirit to help me keep that high benchmark that Jesus has set. Never lower it. Never lower that benchmark. He has set that benchmark. And so don't look around you 
to see the little faults and the mistakes that we get to get to see very often within the church because we see the human dimensions of the church. But always keep our eyes focused on the bridegroom. He is our benchmark. He is the one we look to and be radiant. Let's close our eyes for a moment. Lord Jesus, you said, a servant is not greater than the master. But you also said, Jesus, do as I have done. Give us the grace that on this journey that we make, we might see faults, we might see mistakes around us in human persons who are journeying with us. But Lord, let me never take my eyes away from you. You are my focus. You are the bridegroom. You are who I see and follow. And by lowering yourself in serving others, you have set the benchmark right up there. So I pray, O oh Jesus, as you sent your spirit upon the apostles, rekindle the fire of the spirit within us again. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.